light and joy and peace abide in me. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Light and joy and peace abide in me. Hello, I'm Willie from the Ozarks and ready for Lesson 93 and A Course in Miracles workbook for students from the original edition here on March the 3rd of 2023. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. You think you are the home of evil, darkness, and sin. You think if anyone could see the truth about you, he would be repelled, recoiling from you as if from a poisonous snake. You think if what is true about you were revealed to you, you would be struck with horror so intense that you would rush to death by your own hand, living on after seeing this being impossible. These are beliefs so firmly fixed that it is difficult to help you see that they are based on nothing. Our sinlessness, our evil, are based on nothing. That you have made mistakes is obvious. That you have sought salvation in strange ways, have been deceived, deceiving, and afraid of foolish fantasies and savage dreams, and have bowed down to idols made of dust? All this is true by what you now believe. Today we question this, not from the point of view of what you think, but from a very different reference point from which such idle thoughts are meaningless. These thoughts are not according to God's will. These weird beliefs he does not share with you. This is enough to prove that they are wrong but you do not perceive that this is so. Why would you not be overjoyed to be assured that all the evil that you think you did was never done, that all your sins are nothing, that you are as pure and holy as you were created, and that light and joy and peace abide in you? Your images of yourself cannot withstand the will of God. Your image of, your, of yourself <laughs> cannot withstand the will of God. You think that this is death, but it is life. You think you are destroyed, but you are saved. The self you made is not the Son of God. Therefore, this self does not exist at all. And anything it seems to do and think means nothing. It is neither bad nor good. It is unreal and nothing more than that. It does not battle with the Son of God. It does not hurt Him nor attack His peace. It has not changed creation nor reduced eternal sinlessness to sin and love to hate. It has not changed creation nor reduced, reduced eternal sinlessness to sin or reduced love to hate. What power can this self you made possess when it would contradict the will of God? Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Over and over this must be repeated until it is accepted. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Over and over this must be repeated until it is accepted. It is true. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Nothing can touch it nor can change what God created as eternal. The self you made, evil and full of sin, is meaningless. The self you made, evil and full of sin, is meaningless. <laughs> Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. And light and joy and peace abide in you. Salvation requires the acceptance of but one thought. You are as God created you, not what you made of yourself. Salvation requires the acceptance of but one thought. You are as God created you, and not 
what you made of yourself. Whatever evil you may think you did, you are as God created you. Whatever mistakes you made, the truth about you is unchanged. Creation is eternal and unalterable. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. You are and will forever be exactly as you were created. You are and will forever be exactly as you were created. Light and joy and peace abide in you because God put them there. <laughs> in our longer practice, in our longer exercise periods today, which would be most profitable if done for the first five minutes of every waking hour. We will begin by stating the truth about our creation. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. So every hour, take five minutes and tell yourself light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Then put away your foolish self-images and spend the rest of the practice period in trying to experience what God has given you in place of what you have decreed for yourself. You are what God created or what you made. One self is true, the other is not there. Try to experience the unity of your one self. Try to appreciate its holiness and the love from which it was created. Try not to interfere with the self which God created as you by hiding its majesty behind the tiny idols of evil and sinfulness you have made to replace it. Try not to interfere with the self which God created as you by hiding its majesty behind the tiny idols of evil and sinfulness you have made to replace it. Let it come into its own. Here you are. This is you. And light and joy and peace abide in you because this is so. You may not be willing or even able to use the first five minutes of each hour for these exercises. Try, however, to do so when you can. At least remember to repeat these thoughts each hour. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. You know, he doesn't want us to feel coerced into doing these lessons. He says, when you're able, do take the first five minutes of the hour and devote it to this, this idea. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. And if you can't do it for the first five minutes because you're either not able or unwilling, at least take a minute to, to, to say it to yourself. You know, if you're driving, you might just not even close your eyes, but, but re remind yourself throughout the day. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Then try to devote at least a minute or so to closing your eyes and realizing that this is a statement of the truth about you. If a situation arises that seems to be disturbing, quickly dispel the illusion of fear by repeating these thoughts again. Should you be tempted to become angry with someone, tell him silently, light and joy and peace abide in you. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Remember, what you see in yourself is what you're going to see in your brother. So you want to see their sinlessness, see the light and joy and peace that abides in them. Even from their perception in this world, they don't see it. You can see it for them. And that's true healing. You can do much for the world's salvation today. You can do much today to bring you closer to accepting the part in salvation which God has assigned to you. And you can do much today to bring the conviction to your mind that the idea for the day is true indeed. Light and joy and peace abide in me. 
My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. And then it, throughout the day, if you have a little fear thought and someone's disturbing you, tell them in your mind silently, light and joy and peace abide in you. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. All right, we're all in this together. Let's treat each other as we treat ourselves. Love your neighbor as yourself. We're learning new ways to do that. Okay, let's go take a look in our text reading for today. And we're ready for, in chapter 10, God and the Ego, section 3, The Willingness for Healing. And uh, while you're turning there, let me tell you about a um, another P out of, uh, this is out of Baker Creek Heirloom Seed, and it's the Lillian's Caseload. One of the best tasting peas we have ever tried. This superior variety was saved by Mennonite farmer Lillian. It is not an old storied heirloom of antiquity, but rather a discontinued commercial variety that this family did not want to see disappear. Lillian explained that she grew caseload peas from Johnny's selected seed, Johnny's seeds and loved the variety. When the company discontinued the caseload pea, Lillian tracked it down some seeds, she tracked down some seeds to save. After almost two decades of seed saving, the variety has developed unique characteristics, making it different from the original caseload pea. Vines reach two to three feet in length, with peas about two and a half to three inches long containing five to seven large sweet peas. Okay, it looks like it's more of a shell pea. Uh, a lot of shell peas, you can also eat the pods too. Some of them are a little stringy. Okay, and that's from Baker Creek Heirloom Seed. And uh, what's going on around the world today? Monday, April 3rd. I found this on holidaysandobservances.com, American Circus Day, American Appreciation Day. I'll just stop right there and say thank you all for joining me. If we're doing this together, we're, we're taking a journey without distance. We're, we're, we're learning that light and joy and peace abide in us. Our sinlessness is guaranteed by our Creator. So American Appreciation Day, don't go to work unless it's fun day. Wow, uh, I'd say that's another way of saying follow your bliss, follow your passion, do what inspires you. That's your closest connection to, uh, to reality, to the way, because that's your true will. Um, fan Dance Day, that's referring to the Asian Fan Dance. Find a Rainbow Day, Fish Fingers and Custard Day, Holy Monday, which is six days before Easter, National Chocolate Moose Day, National Film Score Day, National Pro-Life T-Shirt Day. <laughs> Pony Express Day, Tater Day, and that's for sweet potatoes, uh, Tweed Day, Weed Out Hate Day. Now that's a good thing that we ought to be doing every day, to weed out hate in our hearts and have only love. World Party Day uh, aims to achieve social change and harmony by partying. Well, that sounds like a nice thing to do. Okay, the willingness for healing. The willingness for he let me put my little card back up here. It's a little windy today. You probably can hear my umbrella. I thought it might rain, so I put my umbrella up and it's flapping in the wind. Okay, light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God, and so is yours. <laughs> the well the willingness for healing. This if sickness is separation, the will to heal. And be healed is the first step toward recognizing what you truly want. Every attack is a step away from this, and every healing thought brings it closer. Let's look at that again. If sickness is separation, the will to heal and be healed is the first step toward recognizing what you truly want. Every attack is a step away from this, and every healing thought brings it closer. The Son of God has both Father and Son because He is both Father and Son. To unite 
the Son of God has both Father and Son because he is both Father and Son. To unite having and being is only to unite your will with his, for he wills you himself. And you will yourself to him because in your perfect understanding of him, you know there is but one will. Yet when you attack any part of God and his kingdom, your understanding is not perfect, and what you will is therefore lost to you. 17. Healing thus becomes a lesson in understanding, and the more you practice it, the better teacher and learner you become. If you have denied truth, what better witness to its reality could you have than those who have been healed by it? But be sure to count yourself among them, for in your willingness to join them is your healing accomplished. Every miracle which you accomplish speaks to you of the fatherhood of God. Every healing thought which you accept, either from your brother or in your own mind, teaches you that you are God's Son. Every healing thought which you accept, either from your brother or in your own mind, teaches you that you are God's Son. In every hurtful thought you hold, wherever you perceive it, lies the denial of God's fatherhood and your sonship. In every hurtful thought you hold, wherever you perceive it, whether it's inside or outside, in another person or in yourself. In every hurtful thought you hold, wherever you perceive it, lies the denial of God's fatherhood and your sonship. 18. And denial is as total as love. You cannot deny part of yourself because the remainder will seem to be unintegrated and therefore without meaning. And being without meaning to you, you will not understand it. To deny meaning must be to fail to understand. You can heal only yourself, for only God's Son needs healing. He needs it because he does not understand himself and therefore knows not what he does. Having forgotten his will, he does not know what he wants. Healing is a sign that he wants to make whole, and this willingness opens his own ears to the voice of the Holy Spirit, whose message is wholeness. He will enable you to go far beyond the healing you would undertake, for beside your small willingness to make whole, he will lay his own complete will and make yours whole. What can the Son of God not accomplish with the fatherhood of God in him? And yet the invitation must come from you, for you have surely learned that whom you invite as your guest will abide with you. We want to invite the Holy Spirit as our guest, not the ego. The Holy Spirit, at paragraph 20. The Holy Spirit cannot speak to an unwelcoming host because he will not be heard. The eternal guest remains, but his voice grows faint in alien company. He needs your protection, but only because your care is a sign that you want him. Think like him ever so lightly and the little spark becomes a blazing light that fills your mind so that he becomes your only guest. Whenever you ask the ego to enter, you lessen his welcome. He will remain, but you have allied yourself against him. Whatever journey you choose to take, he will go with you, waiting. You can safely trust his patience, for he cannot leave a part of God. Yet you need far more than patience. 21. You will never rest until you know your function and fulfill it. For only in this can your will and your Father's be wholly joined. To have him is to be like him, and he has given himself to you. You who have God must be as God, for his function became yours with his gift. Invite this knowledge back into your minds, 
and let nothing that will obscure it enter. The guest whom God sent you will teach you how to do this. If you but recognize the little spark and are willing to let it grow. Your willingness need not be perfect because his is. You're, you just need to have that little willingness. But he, he'll, he says, your willingness need not be perfect because his is. If you will merely offer him a little place, he will lighten it so much that you will gladly extend it. And by this extending, you will begin to remember creation. In the last paragraph to finish this section, 22. Would you be hostage to the ego or host to God? <laughs> Would you be hostage to the ego or host to God? You will accept only whom you invite. You are free to determine who shall be your guest and how long he shall remain with you. Yet this is not real freedom, for it still depends on how you see it. The Holy Spirit is there, although he cannot help you without your invitation. And the ego is nothing whether you invite it in or not. The ego is nothing whether you invite it in or not. Doesn't mean you don't think it's something, but it's really a nothing. Real freedom depends on welcoming reality and of your guest, only he is real. Real freedom depends on welcoming reality and of your guests, only he, the Holy Spirit, is real. Know then who abides with you merely by recognizing what is there already and do not be satisfied with imaginary comforters for the comforter of God is in you. Wow. Okay, well, let's see if we can't uh, do our song. And you remember what we're to do? Uh, the first five minutes of every waking hour, remind yourself of this idea today. And if you can take five minutes, do so. If not, at least say it. Hopefully close your eyes if possible. If not, at least say, Light and joy and peace abide in me. Your, my sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Light and joy and peace abide in me light and joy and peace abide in me my sinlessness is guaranteed by god light and joy and peace abide in me my sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. And if anyone tends to bother you during the day, disturb your peace, whether it's perceived in your mind or whether they do something outside yourself, say, light and joy and peace abide in me. Light and joy and peace abide in you your sinlessness is guaranteed by god my son light and joy and peace abide in you my sinlessness is guaranteed by god Light and joy and peace 
abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. My light and joy and peace abide in you. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God.